season replays, fantasy drafts, ultimate created leagues, and what if tournaments. It's Coffee Cup Games with the coach, DKM. Hey, 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 it's Coach DK. We are at the end of August, so we are looking at how the season's playing out. We only have about two weeks left in the season. And so everything's coming down to the wire. Let's look at the standings right now. In the American League, we have the Chicago Invaders. They are 91 and 57, so they do have a little bit of a chance to be able to make, uh, to break 100, but they are um, comfortably in first place. Um, as you can tell, um, part of that reason is because they have won 11 games straight. Um, and so in the month of, um, all, excuse me, yeah, August, they went 20 and 8. So they have skyrocketed. They were within a very, very close race, only a couple games up. But over the last week and a half, couple weeks, they have really skyrocketed, giving themselves a pretty comfortable lead. You also see that um, in second place is Brooklyn, um, followed closely by Cleveland, Milwaukee, and Detroit. So still a very, very close race um, with 14 games left right here. You can tell that uh, anything could happen. Um, coming after that group there, though, obviously you don't want to be in fifth. Uh, so Detroit and Milwaukee obviously are fighting with Cleveland, trying to get out of that fifth spot, trying to get up to third. Um, that's especially important since Kansas City currently, who is in the sixth spot, would be playing the number three team. They have a first team that has a losing record in the conference or in the league. Um, so Kansas City is a sixth. Buffalo is still in the mix of trying to be able to take over Kansas City. Um, but obviously then Minneapolis Millers are well at the bottom, 41 games out. In the National League, we got the Brooklyn Superbas. Uh, they are 92-56. and 56. They are one game better than the Chicago Invaders, but their lead has um, was around six and a half for a long time. They get a little lower, they get higher, but they have also done an incredible job. They have improved their record. As you can see, um, they had a very, very good August. They went 19 and nine. Um, so they also had a very good record that is helping them close out the season. They should come in first place. They need two more games to win two more games, and they will have clinched the pennant for the National League. Um, but after that, it is Boston and St. Louis uh, really fighting it out. St. Louis um, has been doing well, um, kind of staying in that mix there. Um, unfortunately, they went 14 and 17 um, in the month, so that has not helped them, but they are still in there. But the team that has really shot up has been Pittsburgh. They were in seventh place. They have shot up to fourth now. Um, if Pittsburgh does what they're supposed to, um, that would be a great matchup in the second round um, between Brooklyn and Pittsburgh. As if Brooklyn beats Cincinnati and Pittsburgh beats Chicago, you're going to have the original number one and two teams playing in the semifinals of the league. And so that will be an interesting game for sure. But it really comes down to Boston and St. Louis for second. Um, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, and Cincinnati, all teams within six games of each other. So a very tight race. Nobody's really out of it. Um, Cincinnati, if I'm correct, has been doing very well. Yeah, they went 9-1 and one the um, over the last 10 days. So they've been 9-1. and one. And in August, you'll see they went 23-8. and eight. So they've done an incredible job coming back in, uh, making themselves, getting back into the mix, trying to get out of that number, the bottom of the barrel, um, the last place team. So as you can tell, some teams are still, um, the top teams are doing great. Um, some teams are, we have a lot of races still to determine, but it'll be really interesting to see how it all plays out. In the league, um, our league leaders, we have Elmer Flick. From Philadelphia, um, he is hitting over 400. Did not think we would have somebody hitting over 400, but Elmer Flick by far um, is the best hitter in the league, and I would say Wagner is pretty darn close behind him. Um, but you see uh, Elmer Flick is hitting 402, Wagner 387, Burkett 385, Bajois 385, uh, McGraw 
is hitting 382, Beckley 381, and then Wee Willie Keeler is hitting 374. Those are our top average guys. Run scored, you got Flick um, leading again at 135, Burkett is at 132. Thomas from Philadelphia is hitting, um, has scored 128 times. Hemp Hill has scored 127, and Pickering has scored 126. The name that I don't see in there, surprisingly enough, is Honus Wagner. I thought for sure he would be in that top group for uh, run scored. Um, hits, Pickering is leading the league, uh, the leadoff man for Cleveland. He's got 240 hits, followed closely by Burkett, 239, and Wagner is hitting 238. Wagner usually hits in the three spot, um, so that many hits is actually very, very good. Um, doubles, Wagner leads with 50. Uh, triples, we have a tie. Um, we have Hemphill and Hickman with 23. Wagner's at 22. Hartzell um, of Indianapolis is 21. And Joe Kelly from Brooklyn is at 20. Home runs. Um, we said that Elmer Flick obviously is the best hitter in the league. But you can see he's got 18 home runs. Sullivan and Donlin um, both are at 17. Um, Shugert and Seabold, Sox Seabold, um, are at 14 followed by Long and Freeman of Boston, uh, Sullivan's teammates, and then Topsy Hartzell with 10. So runs batted in, we have about six, seven guys who have over 100 RBIs already. Jesse Barquette um, is got leading the league with 126. Elmer Flick, um, probably the MVP of the National League, has 118. Honus Wagner's 111. Ed Delahante is 104. Dungan is at 103, Lachance at 101, and Keeler at 101. So you can see a lot of Hall of Famers in there, except for Dungan and Lachance, but five of those guys do end up making the Hall of Fame eventually. Um, other Hall of Famers in that list is Lejoie and Joe Kelly at 97 and 94, respectively. Um, going down to stolen bases, another one I like to look at, um, Ollie Pickering leads the league with 67. Anderson with 65, and Barrett with 61. So um, Pickering has been one of the best players in the league um, consistently. Um, hitting streak, it was Pickering, but uh, Van Haltren of the New York Giants got a hitting streak of 25, which is incredible. Um, so that is currently the top league. We don't see anybody with a current streak at 18 or higher. Um, so right now it's Van Haltren. Um, total bases, you see Elmer Flick with 355, no surprise there. Honus Wagner with 347, and then the only other guy with over 300 is Jesse Burkett at 312. Um, going down toward the pitchers, we see Cy Young, who ironically in the year 1900 had his first, if I'm correct, non-20 win season. Um, but he has 28 wins for St. Louis, obviously he didn't riding his uh, coattails as he's continued to lead St. Louis. Um, Patterson of Chicago Invaders has 21. Deneen of Boston has 21. Joe McGinnity has 21. And Noodles Hawn has 21. The other guys who have over 20 wins so far is Cronin and Lee and Reedy. Um, so you see a lot of guys from Chicago. There's three guys on the list um, from Chicago. You see a couple guys from Brooklyn. Um, but Chicago obviously doing really well. Their pitching seems to be on point. The one stat that you don't want to be the, lot, the top of is losses. Scott from Cincinnati has 23 losses. Um, Molly from Buffalo, who I believe we actually saw earlier in one of our replays, has 20. And Bailey has 20. So ERA is the next one that we tend to look at. Um, Jack Cattole. You notice you got... Four guys, yep, four guys in the top six who are all from Chicago Invaders. The top three all are um, Chicago's pitchers. You got Jack Cattell with a 1.28. He's been pretty much leading the league all year. Denzer is at 1.46. So two guys who have qualified with innings pitched um, are under that 2.0 mark. They're actually all the way below the 1.5, so a big gap there. Um, you have Reedy with a 2.10. Gardner at 2.11. Fisher, the other uh, Chicago pitcher, at 2.13. Detroit's Yeager is at 2.17. We've seen him a couple of times. And Hart, who we saw, was at, is at 2.19. Um, most innings pitches is Cy Young 
Um, total base batters faced is Cy Young. Um, most games pitched is Corbett from Minneapolis Millers. He has pitched in 89 games, followed closely by Chicago Orphans um, Harvey, who has 88. Um, most games started, we have three guys above 40. It's Amoli, Lee, and Carrick. Complete themes, we have Deneen from Boston, Holly, uh, Pink Holly from the Giants. We have Jack Cattell with 16 uh, gear. I want to say it was Doc gear, but I'm not sure if that's correct, uh, with 16. And Cy Young with 16. Uh, most saves, you're not going to see a lot just because of the year 1900, but the league leader is with 11, which is Hal from Brooklyn. Um, moving down, we see shutouts. We see Fisher with five. Toll with five and Deneen with five. Uh, interesting enough, who you do not see on this list is Cy Young, uh, the, the best pitcher in the league when it comes to wins. Um, strikeouts, I'm talking about Cy Young, he's leading the league with 112 strikeouts. Noodles Hahn, who was originally the National League leader in strikeouts, has 107. And so that's kind of where we are when it comes to our um, league leaders. Um, looking at team totals, you'll see that Brooklyn and Philadelphia lead the league, both teams with over 300 averages. Um, the team that might be a little bit surprising is the Chicago Invaders. Obviously, we saw that their pitching is incredible um, with all those guys with the ERA. <coughs> but they are um, toward the bottom when it comes to um, the league average um, team average for the league uh, the team with the most home runs it's not even close it's boston they have 60 um, home runs um, the next team is actually st louis they have 44 um, and then after that you have a couple teams in the 30s with the indianapolis leading the group of 30s with 38 um, era as mentioned before chicago invaders have the best pitching by far in the entire major league um, they have a 2.24 ERA. They've held their opponents to a 2.37 batting average. That is almost 50 points below the league average. So um, they have done an incredible job with their pitching. The second best team, in my opinion, may be the Cleveland um, Babes. They are um, 2.58 team average. They have a 3.24 ERA. ERA wise, you have Milwaukee and Indianapolis, though, who are above them at 3.07 and 3.19, respectively. Surprise um, team is probably Boston. They are one of the best teams, obviously, in the league, but they have a 4.43 ERA. Even though giving up a team average, they're allowing their average is well below the league average, um, they are giving up runs. And so something that they're obviously struggling with. Um, but Boston is probably the surprise there when it comes to um, the pitching. Uh, very, very, just giving up a lot of runs, even though they're not giving up a lot of hits. It does appear that they are walking a ton of batters, which seems to be hurting them a lot. Um, moving on, we're going to go down to, let's check out the injury reports. We do have a couple guys who are still on the injury report. Um, some guys that will not be able to finish out the season. You do see there are two guys from Cleveland, Chrisham and Egan. You see two guys um, from Detroit. Um, Fifield um, is going to be out for the rest of the season. Um, Gray is almost out for the entire season. He'll come back for the last game of the season for the Hoosiers if they have two guys out. We already talked about Rube Bodell. He's already out for the rest of the season. Um, for Brooklyn, you have Knops. He is out. Um, going to be out for the rest of the season. Um, for Chicago Orphans, you have um, Menifee. And for Cincinnati, the Hall of Famer Sam Crawford is out. And so that's obviously a big one. Um, New York Giants took a hit. Their best pitcher, Christy Mathewson, future Hall of Famer, one of the best pitchers all time, um, is out. And he will be out until the last game of the season. Once we start the playoffs, though, everybody does get a clean bill of health. Um, we do take away injuries um, at that point, and then any injuries that occur during the playoffs obviously will be what they are. Um, usually what I've done in the past is injuries during playoffs only last that game. Um, just to try to let them play it out and see the best players play. Um, but you can tell Detroit has had 255 
games lost to injury this year. Um, Pittsburgh has only lost 50, and yet Pittsburgh is in fourth place, so that's a little bit surprising that they have struggled as much as they have this year. Um, going to the awards voting, we will look at this from an American League and then a National League perspective. On the American League, you see Ali Pickering is um, at 375 for the MVP. He's followed closely behind Sox Seabold at 367. On the Cy Young Award, you see Jack Cattole from Chicago at 124, and his teammate is in second, um, Patterson, with 102. Um, best players, all-star selections, which we'll do at the end of the season. You see Power as a catcher, LaChance at first, Magoon at second, Hartman at third, um, Sugart at short, and then in the outfield, it looks like we have first will be Ollie Pickering, Sox Seabold would be second, and Hemp Hill would be third. Um, so that would be our um, outfield and the full lineup for our, top, our first team, our starters for the All Star selection. Um, you do see Jack Cattol, um, Patterson obviously are the top two go getters. You do see Reedy and Waddell, Gear, Yeager, Dender, Cronin, Kellum, Win Kellum. Uh, Fisher, um, Hart, and Hoffer are all looking like they might be able to make the All-Star. Obviously, all but maybe the last four guys should make it for sure at this point. And there might be a couple of little people that might slide in there, but it looks like that's almost set with only two weeks left. Um, uh, when we come down to the National League, we do see Elmer Flick is obviously the go get the top um, vote getter. He has 379 votes. Wagner ha is close behind with 369. In my opinion, I would probably still say it should be Flick. Um, I think the main difference is possibly records, balance of teams. I don't know, but I think Wagner should have a much bigger lead than that. Cy Young is about to win the award for his namesake. He has a very comfortable lead over Noodles Hahn. Don't see any change there. All-star selection, we have Chief Zimmer, uh, Jake Beckley, Nap LeJoie, Jimmy Collins, um, Bill Dolan, Jesse Burke. And then in the outfield, we would have, it looks like, Elmer Flick, Honus Wagner, and Jesse Burkett. I believe most of the entire team, minus maybe two of them, are Hall of Famers. Uh, the pitching would be Young, Noodle Tong, Deacon Philippe, uh, Howe. Deneen Orth, Kitson, Waddell, McGinnity, Garvin, Harvey, and Kennedy. Don't really think there's too much of a surprise with any of those names there. Um, a lot of those guys we've seen, again, I do believe, just based off of the votes, if Thrift Yard Kennedy is at 744, I would say everybody else looks like they'll be safe. Kennedy might not make it, depending on how he does. Um, let's go ahead and finish up with the record book. Um, Longest game so far is a 13-inning game. We've seen two of those uh, this year. We saw one in June, one in July. Um, most runs scored, um, 27, as the New York Giants scored 27 runs, um, which is incredible. Um, by far the highest runs in a game. Um, most runs by two teams, you'll see that in that game they won 27, but they did give up 13 runs, so a 27 to 13 uh, game. Um, I do believe we had a game that we had a lot of runs, but nothing that looks like that it compares. Um, most hits, we had a game where we were in the 30s, I believe, but we never got past 35, so the most hits um, by both teams is 45. We had um, Selbeck. Of the Giants had eight at bats in one guy game. Jesse Burkett had six hits, and I really believe we actually had a game where recently. Oh, this is the National League, so we won everything here, so that might help a little bit. So 13 run innings, 27 runs, 32 hits. So nothing that really seems to be changing here. Um, the most hits by both teams. Um, 49 between Detroit and Kansas City. Most at bats. All right, now we're seeing some things right. Um, is eight. We had three guys do that. Most hits in a game. 
Um, we were part of the game. We did that as a highlight where Gennins has six hits um, in six at-bats. Obviously, uh, that's the most recent time that a player had six hits. We were able to see that. That was pretty awesome. Um, most home runs in a game, we have several players who have had two. Um, nobody with three home runs, so it is what it is. Most runs scored, we do have five being the top. Most RBIs is seven. Um, that happened just yesterday, it looks like, in, or I guess it would be today, um, where Hugh Duffy um, had seven RBIs for Boston against Chicago and six at bats. Um, and just about 10 days beforehand, Sullivan from Boston, uh, his teammate had seven RBIs against Pittsburgh and only four at bats. Most stolen bases, we have several guys with four. Um, Always one of the ones I like to look at to see if there's any no-hitters, which we have not had yet. Um, nobody's had a no-hitter yet. Jack Cattoll has had two games where he only gave up one hit. Um, Vic Willis, the Hall of Famer, he did it in May. And then the most recent one, none in August, the most recent one was in, at the end of July, where Taylor of Chicago uh, ended up one hit against the New York Giants. Um most strikeouts in a game, Noodles Hahn had nine. So that's actually very impressive. And he did that in eight and a third innings. Um, so nine strikeouts for Noodles Hahn. Um, Sparks of Milwaukee had eight against Buffalo. He did it in the full nine innings. <coughs> but after that, the highest that we have is seven. So that's kind of where we are when it comes to uh, everything. Again, Chicago... Invaders lead the American League. They have a comfortable lead. They need seven games out of the next 14. They need to win half of them to, to clinch. Um, Brooklyn pretty much is about ready to clinch. They just need to win two games out of the next 14. A lot of tight races um, going on. It looks like Cleveland, Milwaukee, and Detroit particularly are really battling out for that 3, 4, and 5 spot in the American League. Indianapolis has a little bit of a comfortable lead in second. So they should be able to wrap that up. Kansas City and Buffalo are fighting a little bit for the 6, 7 spot. In the American League. In the National League, you have two, um, I would say, two battles going on. Um, you have Boston, St. Louis fighting for second and third, um, and then you really have a big clump between fourth place and maybe even all the way down to eighth place, um, where you have teams all within six games of each other, and that could all play out in different ways. So, and that's the season so far. Um, all the way up to August, we only have 14 games last. So that would make one more game of a replay we might do something just at the end of the season if there's a game that comes up that we just feel like we have to show but otherwise um there we are that's august um until next time this is coach dk hope you guys have a good one bye